positions were tech trainers, and this year the coordinator positions we merged with the curriculum department, so we have curriculum responsibilities as well as tech initiatives um, going on. So um, I am new to this position this year. In the past, I was an instructional coach at Garten, and then before that, I taught first and third grade at Brubaker. So um, I've kind of been a little bit all over the place, but um, my job is to help you remove technology barriers in your classrooms, in your everyday environment so that you can do your best teaching possible for kids. And one of those initiatives that we're heavy on this year is the projectors. So I realized you guys just got these and so we wanted to make sure we got out here as soon as possible so that we can make sure you guys can get all set up and running with them as fast as you can. Um, you guys are actually at a little bit of an advantage. I know that you've been in school a month and you're just now getting these, but for teachers who got them at the beginning of the year with the Go Math, um, we're having to go back and reteach some stuff. So you guys kind of have the advantage of having Go Math kind of figured out a little bit now, and now you can plug in the tech piece. Hopefully you notice that your math lessons just add one more bit of excitement engagement with this piece. We're finding that kids are really into it. They want to get on it, they want to turn, and it's really um, kind of cool for math, not just for math, but for a lot of other aspects. <coughs> so I'm going to walk you through the basic setup, the chords, what you've got. Um, how many of you are interventionists? Okay, so I will tie in some application for you guys as well since you don't have one directly in your space, but you will probably go and be going in classrooms and maybe using them for your teaching or using Smart Notebook on your individual teacher stations as well. Um, so we'll go through the setup, we'll go through um, the toolbar, and then we'll finish in Smart Notebook where I'll show you a few shortcuts. My official training for Smart Notebook to become certified is next week. So what I'm showing you today is just what we've learned from messing around in it, but it should make you um, a little bit more efficient with the Smart Notebook. It is a ton of information crammed in 25 minutes, but we've recorded it, so we'll be able to reference that if you need to. Um, we'll, you can also email me anytime um, with questions, and I can come out and work with you and, and show you some things too. So hopefully between this demo today, and then we also have an Epson video, that you received a link to last week and that we'll resend out so that you can reference it. Okay, good. Katie just, re re just resent it out so that you can reference that to help you get up and running. Hopefully you have a pizza box in your room. If you don't, I believe these are in the office. You will need this to get your projector up and running. So if you have time um, today to go down and pick it up, you'll get a pizza box and then you'll also get three additional cords. With that, they will be in big baggies. They'll be a VGA cord. Um, a USB cord and then a big HDMI cord. You will not use every single cord in your box, but please don't get rid of them. Put them somewhere safe because we're finding uses for them as we go, um, and you might use them with some of the technology later on. Um, some of them are high def cords with an HDMI cord in there. Right now, our computers don't do HDMI, but in the in the future, it's possible that we have some kind of technology that's capable of running an HDMI. So please don't get rid of anything. Um, just store them somewhere, whether not in the pizza box, but or maybe you collect them all and store them in one central place um, so that you have them for later. You will have in your pizza box um, an extra VGA cord. This is a little bit more um, updated than the ones that we've used with document cameras in the past that had the little blue ends. We're finding that some of those cords are making the displays yellow. Um, or tinted and it's just because they're outdated. So if that happens to you, just switch to this VGA. Um, you'll also have in your box a remote with, um, it'll come with the black batteries go in the remote. Please don't lose this. We right now don't have replacement remotes. So if you lose it, the only way to turn your projector on is with a button or through a menu and we really don't advise um, pushing any of the buttons up here because you could mess up the calibration on your machine. Um, that's why they're so high so we don't accidentally bump them. It will mess up the one-to-one -one touch on your screen. So try to avoid that if all possible. I mean, if you have to, you're not going to ruin it. But just the, if a daily push of that could affect the calibration, so we recommend using your remote. Um, a lot of teachers have put Velcro on them and just Velcro to their board. If you have a ledge on top, you can set them on the top of the ledge. You will also have a pen box and two interactive pens. The white batteries that are in your pizza box go into the pens. They are rechargeable. You will also have a battery charger 
Um, these are for the batteries for the pens. They don't recharge very often, usually like once every couple weeks, um, depending on how much you use them. This is magnetized, so you can magnetize it anywhere in your board. Just um, remember not to put it in the display of the projector. It will interfere with the touch. So somewhere around the outer perimeter of your board. A few of the cords. This one is probably the most important cord you're going to have for your projector. It is what makes it touch enable. So this is the USB cord, and you'll notice it's got two different ends. These are not in your pizza box, unless someone has gone through and put them in there. Um, DMP, we decided to upgrade these cords. What the district said, or what, yeah, they're in their boxes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So they sent them in addition, so someone at your building has put them in your box for you. This is your interactive cord. You'll notice one side has, um, <coughs> excuse me, an adapter. This is the part that plugs into the wall. So all you do is just plug this into the white little box. This is your USB. And then you can plug it into any of the three USB ports on your laptop. It doesn't matter which one, but this gives you interactivity. So if you get your board turned on and you notice you have a display but nothing's touching, make sure that you have this cord plugged in. Um, that may sound simple, but that's some of the issues we've been troubleshooting around the district is people forgetting that they have to have this plugged in for touch to work. The other cord is a VGA. You'll notice the ends look similar, but there are a few small differences. This is your audio cord, and you'll notice it's shorter than this end. This is the one that needs plugged into the wall, and it'll say to display on it. So it's a VGA, so this is going to give you your picture and your sound. The projector has built-in speakers, and they're really good, so that should be enough. You should not need um, an extra set of, of speakers. Do you guys have built-in amplifiers or anything? Built-in speakers? No. Okay. So you shouldn't need any extra speakers. The sound from the projector should be enough. You're going to plug in this to your headphone jack and then to the back of your computer. Um, if you have the newer models, they don't screw in, so just make sure that's in nice and tight or you won't, might not have a picture or it might be a little bit shaky. That is all you need to set it up. So just remember a silver cord with the little adapter closest to the wall and then your VGA audio cord. To turn it on, you just hit the blue button. And you can point anywhere. You don't have to point it at the, to the screen. You can point it anywhere within the display. Just one time, and that should load it up. The first time you have it installed, it's going to need to run drivers. So let those drivers run. That's just enabling your computer to have the software to be able to make it touch. Sometimes, how many of you are on Windows 8? Is anyone? Okay. Windows 7 takes a little bit longer, and you'll notice. Um, There'll be a little rectangular box with a green um, circle going around and around. That just means it's looking for drivers and updating. So let that update. Um, you'll also notice that your USB cord has a solid red light. If that does not have a red light or that light turns off, that means your drivers didn't download correctly. Um, just send me an email and I can walk you through how to make sure, how to double check that. Um, you might also try taking your USB and plugging it into a different USB port. Sometimes changing ports, resends a signal and allows those drivers to download. So um, double check those two things. You'll notice that, um, we call this the magic box, I don't know what the real name for it is. On the inner, uh, this is like the interactive box, you should have a blue light, that means your touch is enabled on your projector. If that is not illuminated when you have it on, let me know and I will come out and, and manually fix the settings to make that interactive. Um, you won't need really to touch anything in this area. In fact, it might be worth putting a sticky note on these that just says do not touch if you have a substitute or something that's looking for how to turn it on or mess with it. If this gets moved, um, that affects your display and will mess up your calibration. So just kind of remind students and anyone who might be coming into your room that this is kind of an off-limits area just so you don't have any calibration issues. It does take a little bit of time for the technicians to come out. They have to manually use tools and things to calibrate it. So and they're kind of backed up right now with all the installations. Once you have your, dis your display on, um, you're going to hold your finger down. This is just the first time. This won't be every time. So the first time or every time you switch. So if you're an interventionist using a different classroom, um, you would do this step two. It's setting your screen resolution so that your touch is one to one. And this is in the video, 
video. So if you watch the video, um, this will <coughs> direct you to that as well. So you just hold your finger down, and that just symbols the right click on a mouse. You can do this from your computer, too, and that's fine. You're going to click on screen resolution, and then you're going to go to resolution, and make sure that your resolution is, high as, is as high as it can go. Um, not all computers work on the highest resolution, but we like to start at the highest because that's the best um, for the projector. So we start at the highest. If we don't have one-to-one -one touch once we apply that, then we come down a notch and down a notch until our, our calibration is right on. So drag it up as high as it can go. Some default to this. Some start at like 1024, um, but just pull it all the way up and then hit apply <coughs> and then okay. And it will ask if you want to keep these changes. Click keep. If you don't, it will revert. Since mine are already like that, it's not um, asking. But And then just go through and check your corners. Make sure that you have touch right on in all of your corners. So now you have interactivity, and you can touch anything you would from your computer on your desktop. So this saves you from having to turn your Mac to your kids, type in a website, or filter something. You can just go straight to your um, desktop or websites and navigate through here. Um, a few things. One thing I'm going to show you um, is just a feature of the projector and we've learned um, of some new programs that make this a little bit more efficient but I want to explain it to you first so you know what this is when and if it pops up on your screen. Over here, no matter whether you have your computer hooked up or not, just when you have the projector on you'll have this little menu. This is mouse mode, so that makes your desktop active and you can click on anything. This pen, and I just tapped over here to get to bring up. This pen and projector is um, pen mode. So this is annotative mode where you can write on anything. The default is the desktop, and you might think that nothing changed, but now, I'm gonna lock that so it stays out. Now you have pen tools. So um, you've got undo and redo. This is just your pen options and your thicknesses and different color choices. There's not a whole lot. Um, in fact, we're going to get the most options out of smart notebooks. So um, when we're using that for Go Math and things, I'll walk through. There's a lot more options in smart notebook. And all this disappears. You have a highlighter. So if you're picking up the Think Central readers or you're displaying on your document camera um, an activity or some kind of sheet and you want to highlight the directions, or highlight the main idea and details, you can. You'll notice that when I was writing right there, it had two lines. If your knuckles or ring or bracelet or something is close to that field, there's about a five millimeter sense plane off of the, off of the board. So if you're really close but not touching, it thinks you're touching. So like that, I'm not really touching it. So if you're noticing you're getting double lines, just double check. Make sure you don't have anything interfering with the plane. Um, sometimes, when I've worked with students on a lesson, they'll want to put their arm here and then write just to help them stabilize. So just remind them that um, that will affect the way they're writing. You can clear all right here. Now the thing to remember about this mode is you can't save anything when you're in here. So any annotations you do will disappear when you are done with them because they're just um, in the projector. They're not saved to your computer. This is just something that a menu that's pulled up in your computer. In just a minute, I'll show you this toolbar with added features that you can download to your desktop and save stuff to. Um, so this is your monitor view, your desktop view. To switch to projector view and get a blank screen, maybe on the fly you want two kids to come up and show their math work, or um, you want to do a quick <coughs> chart to compare and contrast, or a Venn diagram. You can just do on-the-fly stuff. If you have stuff that you're planning and you want to develop in Smart Notebook might be your better view, but this is for on-the-fly teaching, um, maybe just for those teachable moments that come up. You can see how this constantly disappears. Okay. So within that mode, this is um, projector mode. You have a few paper templates. You have the blank templates. You have line writing paper. Maybe you want to do a morning message in the morning that you just want to write on real quick, or you want to have students write sentences. Um, you guys are mostly kindergarten, <coughs> so this paper is not going to work. That's where Smart Notebook has some um, templates that you can download for the bigger handwriting lines. You also have grid paper if you want to do graphs or coordinates or that kind of thing.